Yo, 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 what's going on, my psychedelic squadron? It's your boy Trippy here coming at you with another Madden 19 video today, man. And I know I'm way later than most people when it comes to giving my analysis for these cards, but it is what it is, man. I think that I'm going to start doing things a little bit differently. Other people show you all this, like, stuff in-game. I'm going to go in my head. I'm going to a little bit more detail and showing you what these cards look like. I'm even going to go into player traits, things along those lines. And I'm going to start comparing them to cards that you can possibly get cheaper that do the same exact thing. So I'm going to help you budget squatters out there just a little bit, depending on, you know, what your budget is. But uh, with that being said, man, um, if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Happy New Year's, man. Um, it's crazy that 2019 is literally this close. But um, yet again, if you're new to the channel, hit the like button, man. Hit the subscribe button. I know you're going to like my content. 100% guarantee that you're going to like it. If you don't, I'm sorry, man. We're just not a match. I apologize. But now that I got my shameless plug out of the way, um, let's go ahead and get into the cards. Now, we have four new, uh, what is it? New Year's College Limited Edition cards that were added to the game. One, Kareem Jackson, Adrian Peterson, Golden Tate, and Grady Jarrett, as well as one Zero Chill player. Now, let's go ahead and get into the Zero Chill player first, which is John Johnson III. Uh, his stats are 87 speed, 91 acceleration, 94 agility, 71 strength, 89 jumping, 88 awareness, 88 play recognition with an 85 zone, 80, or 89 zone, excuse me, 85 man, the 92 hit power now comparing them to the card that i suggest that you would get instead of him if you're trying to go the the budget route which isn't necessarily the best of budget routes it's actually going to be landon collins now john johnson actually goes for 71k somewhere in that range on xbox i didn't see him go for that low he's probably about 83k somewhere in that range and landon actually goes for a little bit more than that 86k so from what I've seen on the marketplace, actually, they're about the same price. And Landon, in my opinion, is just a little bit better, regardless of that minus one overall. Um, between the speed, which is exactly the same, but you can also power Landon up, which gives him the plus one. Uh, the agility and acceleration goes to John Johnson. The awareness and the catching goes to Landon Collins. But the jumping and stamina go right back to Johnson. So apparently he's more of an athlete than Landon Collins. But when it comes to tackling, hit power, block, shitting, play recognition, all that good stuff definitely goes to Landon Collins in that regard. And some of these stats are actually way better. But uh, the man coverage and zone coverage go to John Johnson. The man by eight and the zone by two. And the press goes to uh, Collins by six. Now, you're not really going to want him to press anyway. But when we're looking at the player traits, the only difference between the two is that Landon Collins is labeled as a big hitter. And John Johnson is more aggressive when it comes to playing the ball in the air. There's not much difference between the two players, so why go out and get this card when you could either already have this card or go get this card for around the same price? Um, the only difference is one will sell for more training, one is quote unquote a higher overall, and and this one sells for snow currently at the moment. So literally the only difference john johnson might be one of the best if not the best option to go ahead and get snow but snow is so cheap you can literally go anywhere for any card and possibly get the best value for snow um other than that not really a big fan of john johnson i feel like they have slided him just a little bit but moving on to the first card that i want to go over from the new year's college edition players it's going to be kareem jackson with a whopping 93 speed 93 acceleration 94 awareness 83 catching, 92 man, 95 zone with a 95 press. And his block shedding is a 65. Pursuit is a 90. This card is an absolute goon, bro. But there's always a but to these cards. Um, Comparing him to who I think stacks up pretty well with him, Darius Slay, not really that much of a difference, man. Um, the speed is exactly the same. Strength is going to go to Jackson. Agility is going to go to Slay. Acceleration is going to go to Jackson plus one. Awareness is the same. Catching goes to Jackson plus four. Uh, jumping is exactly the same. Stamina goes to Slay. Now, going to the defensive stats, which actually matters as far as coverage is concerned, we have the press goes to Kareem Jackson. 95 press is really hard to beat right now. Like, I don't think there is a higher press. It might be the same between him and Xavier Rhodes. Um... The 95 zone, 92 man, they're exactly the same as well as the play recognition. The only thing that's different is more of like the big boy stats, which is um, 
goes to Kareem Jackson. His pursuit is plus 13. His block shedding is a plus 8. 65 block shed for a cornerback is insane. Um, I don't know about insane, but it's pretty damn high. Finesse move and hit power, which is shocking, actually goes to Darius Slay. Uh, 73 isn't the best of hit power, but it's still pretty decent. So he'll, he'll come up and lay a, a baby boom. You know what I'm saying? On a running back or something coming to the outside, but nothing too crazy. And uh, he only goes for like 275K. So don't go out and spend 752K or whatever he goes for right now when you can get someone for way less than half the price. And um, the traits, in my opinion, definitely have to go to uh, Slay, even though they're basically the same. The only difference is Slay is actually more clutch than Kareem Jackson, apparently. The next card I want to go over is AP All Day Adrian Peterson, man. With a whopping 93 speed, 92 acceleration, 93 agility, 82 strength, which is kind of pretty high for a running back. 95 truck, Lord Jesus, and a 94 stiffy. Dude is going to be out here manhandling folks, son. Absolutely manhandling them. With a 93 ball carry vision, 95 juke. So he got a little shiftiness to him, boy. Little, just, just a little bit. Uh, 80, 88 elusiveness with an 85 spin and a 93 break tackle. So this card looks pretty damn good. And there's only one card that I can really fully compare him to. Now comparing the two, I had to go with Ricky Williams, man. Only because Ricky's like the meta for running backs. Dude's got the speed, the strength, the juke, the spin, the truck. He's an absolute all-around package. Now comparing the two, of course, when you have Adrian Peterson fully powered up, he has a plus one speed advantage, plus one strength advantage, plus two agility advantage, but the awareness and the catching go to Ricky, but the jumping and the stamina go right back to AP. The trucking actually goes to AP plus five, um, but the truck stick definitely still works for Ricky Williams. The looseness goes to Ricky. Stiff arm is a tie, apparently. The spin move goes to um, Ricky. The juke goes to AP plus four. The carrying and the short running definitely go to my main man, Ricky, uh, catch and trap, expect catch, things along those lines. Not really too much of a difference in that area, though. Uh, and the pass block and pass block power, all those stats go to my main man, Ricky. So uh, with all that being said, man, uh, getting down to the player traits, um, there's kind of a difference. Now, Ricky doesn't have a high motor, but he does brace for all hits. And he does fight for extra yards. AP only braces versus medium hitters, which could possibly be a problem. His carrying isn't bad. I think it's like a 91 or something like that. Uh, let's double check that. A oh, 93. So his carrying isn't bad, but the fact that he braces for medium hitters and not all hits is kind of eh. So it, it could be a little sticky when you get um, hit by, I don't know, a Bobby Schwagner, a Luke Keekly, uh somebody somebody who will lay the boom and he might fumble so that's just a possibility there's no guarantees of course but i'm just gonna go have to go with ricky williams he's way cheaper because he's fucking free and it's ricky point blank period now getting into the next card which is gonna be my main man golden take the third the newest eagle on the team got a 95 overall card today wasn't really expecting it but you know ea does throw curveballs at us all the time with a whopping 90 speed, 92 acceleration, 96 agility, 92 jumping, 96 awareness, 94 catching, 94 catching traffic, 91 spec catch, 96 short run running, 91 mid run running, 84 deep run running with an 86 release. Now his run after the catch stats are going to be what makes Golden Tate because that's him as a player. Now he has 93 elusiveness, 93 ball carrier vision, 85 spin move with a 92 juke move and an 88 break tackle. So he's like a running back in the wide receiver position uh just isn't as big as you know running back should be but he is a goon once he gets the ball in his hands now i'm going to compare him to another person who is really good once they get the ball in his hands that's a b so i fully power both of these bad boys up just so you can get a common knowledge of what they look like uh the speed is actually a plus one in antonio brown's favor the strength goes to golden tate agility and acceleration are a tie awareness goes to golden tate i don't know how Catching goes to Antonio Brown, and the jumping goes to Golden Tate. Now, let's get into the run onto the catch stats. Um, ball carrier vision, oh, excuse me, elusiveness and break tackle, as well as trucking, all go to Golden Tate. Ball carrier vision and stiff arm 
go to Antonio Brown, both of those plus one. Spin move, go to Golden Tate, juke move is exactly the same. Carrying and short running, uh, go to freaking Golden Tate, but mid route running and deep route running, which are kind of, well, not necessarily the mid, but the deep route running is low for Golden Tate. That goes to freaking Antonio Brown. The catching traffic is, is a tie. The catching traffic is a tie. The spectacular catch release, all those rest of these stats basically just go to uh, Antonio Brown, which is basically to be expected. And uh, going down to the player traits, they're both clutch. They both brace for all hits. There's no difference down here. So in my opinion, I would just go ahead and stick with Antonio Brown. I personally got him for, you know, the NAT uh, Ghost of Madden Presence pack. I didn't power him up yet because it's, that's a lot of coins. But... He's, he's, he plays pretty damn well. He's, he's got to be like the best, if not the second best slot receiver in the game. So do not go out and spend all these coins on Golden Tate. When you can go ahead and get AB for about 250K if you spend, you know, the proper snow correctly. Now getting into the last card of the video. Going to go ahead and go with my main man, Grady Jarrett. Uh, defensive tackle out of Clemson plays for... The Atlanta Falcons now. Uh, is that a whopping? I keep saying whopping. 73 speed, 85 acceleration, 92 strength, 94 awareness, 94 play rec, 93 power move, 95 block shed, 91 pursuit, 92 tackle with a 90 hit power. Um, there's just so. I, I think, in my personal opinion, there's a lot of defensive tackles in the game. And why go out and spend all these coins? We can get you someone like, I don't know. Boom! A Duran pain for literally about 170,000 coins and they their stats really aren't far off whatsoever uh, looking at the speed Duran Payne actually has a advantage in speed strength acceleration catching really doesn't matter in my opinion uh, by like you know plus three one one fifteen things along those lines but Grady Jarrett does have an advantage in acceleration agility and jumping but we'll get on to the big boy stats. Grady Jerry does beat him in every category, but it's only like plus one, plus two, plus nine, uh, and finesse move. But a finesse move, Deron Payne is not a finesse type of person. Uh, play recognition, you do not expect Deron Payne to have such you know high play recognition just due to the fact that he is a rookie in real life. So, so that's to be expected. But minus one in tackling, minus two in power move, minus one in pursuit. These things are absolutely fixable with chemistries. Uh, you throw a pass rush chemistry on Deron Payne, uh, his finesse move is going to be at a 79, and his power move is going to be at a 94, which is not bad at all. You throw these things on, it'll be like him base, and it's way cheaper to do that as opposed to buying Grady Jarrett, who is 700 freaking K. So just keep that in mind, and looking at their uh, character traits, the only difference between the two is that... Grady Jarrett is known as a big hitter, and Deron Payne really isn't. But as long as he eats up those blocks and lets your linebackers eat, none of that even matters, man. Now, hopefully you did enjoy the video. Hopefully, um, these this is gonna be what my my videos are kind of kind of consist of, is me comparing the newer cards to the older cards and seeing if there's anything that you know any different, or if you should really go out and buy this card if it's a must-have, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Um, like I said, I hope you did enjoy. If you did, go ahead and leave a like. Hit the subscribe button, man, for more Madden 19 content. Two piece those mofos. It'll help the channel grow tremendously. Uh, also, comment down below. What do you think of these new cards that were released into the game? And uh, if you're going to pick any one of them up, that's it. Like I said, don't forget to comment down below. And uh, stay tuned for more Madden 19 content such as this. And until next time, guys, peace.